Okay, in this video we're going to look at fractions, and we're going to look at order in fractions. So let's have a look at a typical question. Now, whenever you get order in fractions, this type of question is really easy, whenever they've got the same denominator. Whenever they don't have the same denominator, which we'll look at in a minute, there's two different ways to do it. One's to convert them to fraction, uh, decimals, which is all well and good, that's fine, but it'll probably take a bit longer. And then for one is to give them a common denominator. Okay, and for that video, it might be worthwhile watching equivalent fractions. So, uh, putting these in ascending order, so we've got 3 tenths, 5 tenths, 1 tenth, and 4 tenths. So, in ascending order means from smallest to biggest. So, the smallest would be 1 tenth, then 3 tenths, then 4 tenths, and then 5 tenths. So, whenever we've got the same denominator, the larger the numerator, the larger the the value is, okay, or the fraction is. So let's have a look at one whenever they haven't got the same denominator. Okay, so here we've got uh, four fractions with different denominators, and we've been asked to arrange them in ascending order. So we've got a half, three fifths, three quarters, and seven tenths. So let's look at what the common denominator would be. So we've got two, five, four, and ten. So what we're going to do is we're going to think what number is in all of these times tables. So what's the lowest common multiple of these numbers? So two times tables, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, so on. Five times tables, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, so on. Four, eight, twelve, ten, twenty, thirty, and so on. Now, if you were to consider what the common denominator would be, you could list them out. You know, you could do two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, so on. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, and so on. Uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, uh, 10, 20, 30, and so on. Um, as you do more of these, you'll be able to spot them straight away, like I can. Now, if you carried on the two times tables, you'd find that we've got here 20, 20, 20. And if you carried on the two times tables, you would get 20. And that's the first number, because 10 isn't, um, 10 works for 2, 5, and 10, but it doesn't work for 4. Okay, so 20 is the common denominator. So we, what we want to do is give all the fractions a denominator of 20. Okay, uh, the video on equivalent fractions is quite useful for this. So, to get a half to have 20 in the denominator, what you would do is you times the 2 by 10. 2 times 10 is 20. So you need to times the top number by 10 as well. 1 times 10 is 10. To get 3 fifths to have 20 in the denominator, you'd need to times the 5 by 4 to get 20. So you need to times the 3 by 4, so you times that by 10. You're going to times this one by, to get from 5 to 4, uh, to 5 to 20, you times by 4, so you're going to times the 3 by 4, which is 12. Um, to get from 4 to 20, you times by 5, so you're going to need to times that by 5, so you're going to get 15. And to get from 10 to 20, you times by 2, so you times the 7 by 2. Okay, so we have got equivalent fractions to the ones we started with, and they have all got a denominator of 20. Now it's really easy to put them in ascending order. In ascending order, the smallest is 10 twentieths, the next smallest would be 12 twentieths, then 15 twentieths, and then find, oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> and then 14 twentieths, silly, and then 15 twentieths. Okay, and then I would then put them back to the original fractions that they were. So the 10 twentieths, so 10 twentieths was a half. The 12 twentieths, so the 12 twentieths was 3 fifths. The 14 twentieths was the 7 tenths. And the 15 twentieths, well that was 3 quarters, being the largest. So in ascending order, they are, just put commas in between them, a half, 3 fifths, 7 tenths, and 3 quarters.